Lead climbing is a great sport. Unfortunately, many beginner lead belayers make a specific, crucial, and sometimes costly mistake. To explain it, let's get the help of our belayer, Bob, and our climber, Billy. I gave Bob a Patagonia jacket so he won't get cold. Now, let's see how two adventurers are climbing the white cliffs of Dover. They get geared up, and as Bob attentively belays, Billy gets to the first clip, the second clip, the third clip successfully, but Billy takes a fall before clipping the fourth clip. How and where Billy falls depends entirely on what Bob does. Let's cover three different scenarios. First of all, Bob stands, rope in hand, doing nothing. Billy will keep falling until the rope comes tight on the motionless Bob, and Billy will take a large and fairly aggressive swing into the rock, quickly loading the gear and putting the system through a lot of unnecessary force when Billy is at no risk of groundfall. This is why we practice dynamic belaying. Let's say Bob gives Billy a good dynamic catch, jumping right as Billy begins to weight the rope. Billy will take a slower fall over a longer arc, falling to a lower place with less momentum and less stress on the gear. This is what we want. Bob could also stand back from the wall, running or jumping into it at the right time with the same results. Now, Bob might try something entirely different, with his thought process probably running a bit like this. Dynamic catch good. Long fall good. Can make long fall by using more slack. Slack means I don't short rope Billy. Billy will like me. Conclusion, no weird jump, only slack. And this may make sense when at the wall, but falls apart when you think about it critically. If you have a lot of slack out, the slack will be taken up when falling and does absolutely nothing to absorb Billy's fall. It only means Billy falls further. Provided Bob does not then jump, Billy will be caught on the rope just as tightly as in the first example and swing into the wall just as aggressively. Provided the wall is consistently overhanging, Billy will have a smaller chance of colliding into the wall than he had in the first example as he would have fallen further. But the stress on Billy, on the gear, and on the rope will be just as bad as if Bob had never tried to dynamically belay in the first place. Lesson learned, don't take out tons of slack just because you think that slack will result in a smoother catch. Just enough to ensure you aren't short roping your climber should be enough. That'll do it for today. See you next time.